Good evening. My fellow kindred, my apologies for disrupting any business or interfering with prior engagements you may have had this evening. It's unfortunate that the affair that gathers us together tonight is a troubling one. We are here because the laws that bind our society, the laws that are the fabric of our existence, have been broken. As prince, I am within my rights to grant or deny the kindred of this city the privilege of siring. Many of you have come to me seeking permission, and I have endorsed some of these requests. However, the accused that sits before you tonight was not refused permission. Indeed, my permission was never sought at all. They were caught shortly after the embrace of this child. It pains me to announce the sentence, as up to tonight I considered the accused a loyal and upstanding member of our organization. But as some of you may know, the penalty for this transgression is death. Know that I am no more adjudicator than I am a servant to the law that governs us all. Let tonight's proceedings serve as a reminder to our community that we must adhere to the code that binds our society, lest we endanger all of our blood. Forgive me. Let the penalty commence. Which leads to the fate of the ill-begotten progeny. Without a sire, most child are doomed to walk the earth never knowing their place, their responsibility, and most importantly, the laws they must obey. Therefore, I have decided that this is bullshit! If Mr. Rodriguez would let me finish, I have decided to let this kindred live. They shall be instructed in the ways of our kind and be granted the same rights. Let no one say I am unsympathetic to the plights and causes of this community. I thank you all for attending these proceedings, and I hope their significance is not lost. Good evening. Your sire. Tragic. My apologies. But you see, there is a strict code of conduct that all of us must... must... adhere to, if we wish to survive. When someone, anyone, breaks these laws, they undermine the well-worn fabric of our centuries-old society. Understand my predicament. Allowing you to live makes me directly responsible for your subsequent behavior. So... What I'm offering is not generosity, but the opportunity to transcend the fate woven by your sire. This is your trial. You will be brought to Santa Monica. There, you will meet an agent by the name of Mercurio. He will provide the details of your labor. I've shown you great clemency. Prove it was more than a wasted gesture, fledgling. Don't come back until you do. 
Good evening. senses, a body that can take a beating, and if you play your cards right, eternal life. That's no sure bet, but still a chance at immortality is not a bad deal. And that's just for starters. French benefits for joining the club. Well, you can still be destroyed, but forget the books and the movies. Garlic? It's worthless. A cross? <laughs> Shove it right up their ass. <laughs> a steak? Only if it catches you in the heart, and then it just paralyzes you. Running water? That's no problem. I bathe. Occasionally. Now, a shotgun blast to the head? Oh, that's trouble, boy. Fire? That's real trouble. Sunlight? Well, you catch a sunrise and it's all over, kiddo. Get it? Okay, now. What the fuck is this? Get inside here and head upstairs. 
stairs. Meet up with them. Down here! Stay away from the windows! Oh, it's a Sabat raid. Sabat? They're, uh... Christ, I told you to this shit to Lair. Uh, Sabat. Oh. They're mostly mindless, bloodthirsty assholes. That's all you need to know for now, alright? The Sabat got wind of the gathering here, so they figured they'd move to hell and put a little heat up the for political rundown. Job one, get out of here a lot. Sabat might be mindless, but they hit like a Mack truck, like raging savages. Nothing a fledgling like you wants to mess with. Shh, shh. Heads up. Back away. Frenzied Sabat bastards. All right, we gotta have a moose out the back quick. I'll stay and keep a watch out. You get us into the office. The door's around the corner here. Shortcut. Well, nicely done, though. Not exactly an angel in life, were you? Cool. Now, if you want a lesson on how really not to act, take notes for those sabat assholes. You're a big bad vampire. Yeah, great, congrats. Now keep it to yourself. You go roar and you beat your chest and that's what you can expect. It's the same reason you don't let humans see you feeding. It's why the wolf doesn't want the sheep to know he's there. It's also why you don't go juggling dumpsters or outrun the 815 from Sacramento. And it's, and it's why you didn't know any of this when you woke up this morning. Keep our secret secret and you make things easier on all of us. We're living in the age of cell phone cameras. Fuck ups ain't tolerated. Makes sense enough, right? Well, it ain't a casual thing for a fledgling like you. That party back there with the guy in the suit and the Magilla Gorilla? The assholes that put your sire to death? That's the Camarilla. <sighs> they make a tidy business out of enforcing vampire laws like this one. Mm, yeah, I'll tell you what I think some other time, maybe. I like to let people form their own opinions. All right, now don't worry, because I know the area a little. You know what? I'm glad we're in this situation, you and I. It illustrates a point. You gotta utilize your surroundings. You do what you gotta do. Theft, destruction of property, breaking and entering. <laughs> 
These will be the least of your sins before the night's out. So look around here. We gotta get out the back there through that magnetically sealed door. There must be a key someplace. There we go. Now take that key card and head out the back. I'll meet you out in the alley there. I'm gonna check out things from topside. Fucking waste of unlife, these Sabbat Vatos. You get winged? Hey, hey! Look at them potholes! Those will close up soon enough. Better feed, though. <laughs> There's someone down the stairs here. It's not the freshest catch, but it'll do. Now, when it comes to feeding, it's quality blood you're looking for, not the quantity. Bums and lowlife don't pack the same punch that a healthy, well-bred human will. Juice bags with a pedigree. That's the good stuff. But you gotta take what you can get. You ever had a PhD, kid? Ooh, that's good stuff. Remember what I said, though. Don't kill them. At least not the innocent ones. You're a monster now. Make no mistake. One of the damned and the fallen. You need to hold on to every last shred of humanity you have. 
And innocent's an innocent. You kill one, even a worthless bum, even by accident, and it's gonna cost you a piece of your own humanity. Bring you closer to that beast you got welling up inside you. The beast? It's always there. It's waiting to take over. When it does, it's like a wild animal wearing your skin. Desperate, scared, reckless. He'll do anything to survive, and it's you that has to deal with the consequences. I said innocent humans. If some asshole levels a 12 gauge your way, you drain him, skin him, and bash in his skull. Self preservation is a vital part of humanity, after all. My favorite part, in fact. <laughs> the only way to fight the beast is to keep in touch with your humanity and don't go hungry. It's a fine line. Alright, now go feed. Be careful, though. He's gonna drain fast. Not quite as good, huh? Yeah, you can do worse. There's some rats down the way. You think I'm kidding? You can survive feeding on animals if you can stomach that kind of thing. <laughs> well, give it a try. Sucker! <laughs> hey, I don't care what you do, but just so you know, polite vampire society looks down on that kind of thing. Keep it down. Got someone around the way here. Not too much of a threat by himself, but you never know if there's more in shouting range. You're gonna have to sneak past. The building across from us with the garage door? There's some double doors on the far side. I'll meet you inside. Just stay low and stick to the shadows. And don't let him see you. All right, go.
inside here. Seems that Shovelhead outside just got separated from his pack. He's wounded too. Go take care of him. Don't worry, he's probably greener than you. The Sabbat, you see, they don't have the most rigorous training program. In fact, that poor sod is lucky if he knows he's a vampire. Nah, he's probably just turned and beaten over the head. They like to do that, make shock troops, cannon fodder, put him out of his misery. He is a vampire, so be ready. Go get him. Sounds like you got another pack moving in, though. The Saban are going all out. You better head underground, avoid straight bullets. All right, head down into the basement through the grate in there. Keep that tire iron handy. I'll be there in a minute. Yeah, whenever you're done, sweet cheeks, we can move this show along. Not sure what's going on. Sounds like the Sabbat's getting scattered. I'm gonna keep an ear to the ground. Be careful going forward here. Could be a whole mess of them holed up.
No need to go stirring up the hornet's nest till we know the score, though. Head through here. Come to an elevator around the way. Meet you there. Don't let him catch you. Gangbangers protecting their turf. Oh man, I'm here thinking it's Sabat moving up in here. It's the fucking locals about to take one for the hood. Yeah, they probably seen too much. Here, take this 38. Fucking pea shooter, but a few shots in it will take down a human. Well, I'm gonna want it back, so don't go die and lose it. I don't use guns much. They're noisy, they're clumsy, practically useless against vampires, but still. A kindred's gotta keep up with the times. And in modern day Los Angeles, that means coming strapped. Well, you know, some are more lethal than others, of course. Watch out for those shotguns. Ouch, those things can smart, I tell you. Head up and clear out what's left of them. Can't have them running their mouths about any of this. I'm gonna make sure there's no stragglers around outside. <laughs>
That's it, Cal. Just like that, and it's all over. Everyone slinks back to their corners of the city for the night. Until the next night, when the Camarilla finds some way to strike back. Parry, dodge, spin, and all that, and so on, and so on, and so on. Well, to be honest, you came at a, well, an interesting time, let's say. The Camarilla, the Sabbat. Well, in L.A., these are the new kids on the block. There's already plenty of kindred at stakes down in California long before them. Now, we got every ancient kindred rivalry playing out all over the city. A lot of tension out there. A lot of fear. A lot of jittery, high-strung predators clinging to their little pieces of eternity. Oh, boy. Oh, I think they're looking for you outside. Guess you got a cab to catch. I was hoping to fill you in on a little bit more, but... Ah, hell, you'll figure it all out. If you make it back, stop in at the last round. It's his bar downtown here. I'll fill you in on the politics. <laughs> now that's the stuff that'll kill you. <laughs> Good luck. Hello, L.A. You're up way past your bedtime, aren't you? Hope you've slipped into something comfortable. I know I have. If you're new to town or just new to this whole radio thing, you're listening to The Dead of Night. The only girl who will spend the night with you and you first thing in the morning, guaranteed. Well, looks like the boards are lighting up. Aren't I the popular one? Let's see. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Who will be the lucky caller? You've got the first shot at dead tonight. So, who do I have to choose? Vigo? So, Vigo, why are you up so late? Um, I'm working late shift here at the, uh, Yacht Club. Uh-huh. How many boats do you own, Vigo? Two. Actually, three. Uh, one is, uh, in the shop. I used to do a little yachting myself. What brand of yacht do you have? Um, you probably wouldn't know the brand. I, uh, bought them in Italy. Ah, la Italia bella. Parlate italiano? Arrivederci, Vigo. Caller two, you're on the dev of night. Be gentle. Hi, Gip. Hello, caller. Hi, Gip. Is tonight a rerun? Yep. Caller number three, what's keeping you up tonight? Dev, listen to me, Dev. They're at it again and people have got to know. They've got to know because they don't know. They won't report the stuff on the news because they own the news. Hello, Gomez. What's the latest conspiracy? Attention. All right. As we all know, the Americans established a moon base back in the late 70s. That's no secret. What most people don't know is that they have been conducting a dig. Not for resources, but for artifacts. I see. Well, it's no coincidence that the Chinese have started conducting space missions. You know why? I'll tell you why. The reason is because the Chinese are trying to stop the Americans from finding an ancient space probe sent by the Beta Centaurians. And why? Because the Beta Centaurians are giving space technology to the Chinese to get back at the Andromedans. A.K.A. the Grays, for giving space technology to the Americans in the 50s. Fascinating. The American government's been putting more money into space. Don't you see what's happening? I can't believe I'm the only one that's figured it out. Am I the only person alive that can see what's going on? It's because the Andromedans and the Betas are going to be fighting their war in this galaxy through us, Deb. And the American people, the people of Earth, you people, cannot let this happen. It's Moon versus at last all over again. Thank you, Gomez. And that concludes the news portion of the show. Well, this girl's got to pay her bill, so it's time for a few commercials. But don't go anywhere. I'm just getting warmed up. Should I say, hot? Friggin' Chicken recently challenged several random people to a taste test between Friggin' Chicken and the other leading chicken-flavored products. Let's listen for which one they prefer. Ma'am, care to participate in a taste test? Here, try this leading brand of chicken. Oh, oh my gosh! Is that weak old fish? Now, try this. Oh, oh! This is some good f Chicken? What is this? Sir, take a test for me? Sure. Oh. Mm. Oh. oh. Seriously, job these up your ass. Here, try this one. Mmm. Hey. Mmm. Motherfucking great chicken right there. 
What is this? It's friggin' chicken. This is cat, right? What are you feeding me, cat? Try this. Holy f That's good. What the f is this sh Nine out of ten people preferred friggin' chicken over the competition. Why? Because that's some good f***ing chicken. I mean, friggin' chicken. Friggin' chicken. I swear it's the best you've ever had. You love the talking baby movie and the talking pig. Even the talking cock on the show. You know the one I'm talking about. But now prepare for the most hilarious talkingest normally nude object yet. He's Steve Cash, a New York banker and recent woodler down on his luck. And ten makes one hundred. Here's your money, ma'am. Man, I happen to have a granular problem. That's it. I'm gonna have all my millions from this bank. Cash! <laughs> She's an ATM machine with the soul of his dead wife. There's something familiar about this ATM machine. I love you. Wow, those marketing guys are geniuses. Together, they're learning to make the most of their special situation. So that girl from accounting used me today. Really? She was in love with everybody else. When she pushed my buttons, she was very gentle. Oh, honey, if you don't stop, I'm gonna have to make a deposit. Transferring cash. Wednesdays at 8.30 on the BMC. Say goodbye. teeth and spots in your dirty dishes. It's incredible. Look at that shine. Your smile or the death of my soul. Harnessing the secrets of the dishwasher. Now there's a dishwasher that's so powerful it doesn't just make your dishes spotless.